Mr. Palmer here, second video in the logic circuits um, thing for A2 or year 13 or whatever you want to call it. All right, so this one's to do with adders, um, looking at what is combinational logic and can you describe how a full, ad full adder is constructed and how it works. You again make sure that you're clear on your logic gates, truth tables, so ZOR uh, and NAND. All right, um, and what are the ones we've got in there? OR and in fact, the whole bunch. Apart from a knot, <laughs> make sure you you know the truth tables for all of them inside out. Okay. Um, also, we'll be going through some diagrams on half adders and full adders. Make sure you can just reconstruct those diagrams from scratch and you know those truth tables inside out. Okay. Um, so basically, what is combinational logic? So if you think about sequential logic um, to do with um, that we saw in flip flops. Okay, where the output is a function of the sequence of the inputs. All right. In combinational logic. Um, basically the output is depends only on the present input okay so the output is a function of the input only the present input okay now uh, the first circuit we're going to look at as a half adder all right so on the left hand side there I've got a little symbol of uh, a half adder okay and that's the definition two parts to it has an input of two bits and it has an output of two bits as a sum and carry terms all right so what does that look like? Okay, that's basically a half adder blown up for you. There are different ways of constructing them, all right? But um, this is the one I'm showing you uses a ZOR and an AND, okay? So you know that if I have an input of 0 and 0, my output at S is going to be 0, and C out, 0 and a 0, is going to be 0. If I have an input of 0 and 1, uh, 0 and 1 gives me an output at S of 1, and C out is also going to be 1. Similarly, if I have 1 and 0, and finally, if I have an input of 1 and 1, then S, because it's a ZOR, exclusive OR, means I get an output of 0, but C out, 1 and 1, gives me 1. So you can see straight away how a half adder is taking an input of 2 bits, and it's going to give you a resulting sum, addition, and the carry for that uh, those 2 bits. Now, if you think about that truth table, that's basically the logic of it, okay? S is going to be um, not A or B, or not A and B, or A and not B, all right? Because it's an OR gate, uh, sorry, a ZOR gate, and uh, the carry out is going to be A and B, yeah? Now, um, a flip-flop, all right? Uh, can basically be used to carry uh, to output a carry bit because it's only got two in, uh, two inputs. But in some cases, we can't use um, a half adder because it uh, has only um, got two inputs. And when you have a carry from a previous calculation, obviously you've got three inputs because you're never you're very rarely going to just add up two bits by themselves. Okay, you're going to be adding a byte or a nibble or two bytes or four bytes or whatever it is. Okay. So, I mean, you can see that as an example, I'm adding two bytes, actually, my second, sorry, I'm adding two bits, my second addition of zero and one has three inputs because I also have a carry. So somehow this um, uh, half adder is useful, but not as useful as it needs to be because it's only doing half of the job. Well, guess what? Half and a half equals one, and it's the same thing. A full adder basically takes two half adders and joins them together. Okay, so I've got my half adder, yeah, and the output from my half adder goes into another half adder because guess what's going to also go into that half adder? The carry. So it's just like when you're doing a calculation in your mind, you add up the two numbers that you have first, then the result to the result of that, you then add the carry. All right, that's going to give you your output S, but we also have to work out if we still have a carry. So basically, the carry from the second half adder and the carry from the first half, uh, half adder go into an OR gate, and that gives us the carry to then go carry out onto the next um, thing that's going to be dealing with the carry. Okay, it could be the next adder along. So that's basically how we construct a full adder. What does that look like in the terms of logic gates? Well, you've got your first um, half adder. Onto that, you take the output to create your second half adder, into which you're going to add your carry coming into your calculation, so that's your third input, and then 
the carry from the first adder is added is awed with the carry from the second adder to get your output carry that goes onwards in your circuit. Okay, so um, what we've got going over here then, this is the bit where you hit pause, right? And you work out the truth table for the for a full adder. Okay, as you can see, we've got three inputs. Therefore, we must have eight permutations. All right, and based on those eight permutations, what is S going to be, as in the sum of the calculation, and what is the carry out that you're propagating onwards going to be? All right, pause now. And I'm assuming that you've just hit play again because you've had a go at trying to calculate uh, work filling this table. Here's mine, right? Uh, you can just come, you know, you don't have to read it yours carefully against mine and just check that, you know, the rows to check that you, you've uh, got the correct inputs. But basically, you can see that where you have got um, a carry coming in, you're able to um, either add them successfully to A and B, A or, or, or you add it to the carry coming in to work out if there's a carry that needs to be propagated forward. Now, basically, if you've got a half adder, you can add two bits. If you've got a full adder, you're going to have three bits. What you're going to do when you have a number that consists of multiple binary digits, because you're very rarely just going to be adding one column of bits, all right? You want to add a nibble, for example. Now, there are two different ways of doing this, okay? The first way is serial addition, where basically you accept all the numbers bit by bit and you add each pair of bits at a time, all right? So I've got a nibble will I add the, first, the least significant bit and then the next least significant bits and then the next least significant bits and then I add the most significant bit and then as we adding each pair you propagate the carry forward okay or you've got parallel addition which accepts that all the bit pairs at once and then it just works out the entire number all in one go all right now obviously you've got to think about the efficiency of an arithmetic circuit because you want high performance in your CPU therefore most CPUs are probably going to be using parallel addition um, in order to, you know, to improve the performance okay so this is an example of a parallel adder for adding up a nibble now what I've done is I've actually flipped the diagram right because the carry is going to always propagate across the left because remember the least significant bit is on the right hand side and the, the bit with the highest value is on the left hand side so we still always start adding from the right hand column and then we keep propagating our, our um, carry across the calculation to the left okay so what does that look like in a calculation well you can see here's my um, example so when I add the number a 0 0 1 1 to the number b 0 1 1 1 okay so in my rightmost full adder 1 and 1 are my inputs for a and I get a 0 um, as my sum but I have a carry going forwards that c1 in purple goes into the second it goes into the second full adder which then does the next calculation, the step of the calculation, then the third full adder does the third uh, bit pair, and then the fourth full adder on the left hand side does the most significant bit. And you can see how the carry is propagated from adder to adder um, along the circuit. Okay, now um, basically you can see that uh, you, you can basically just keep adding four bit adders together, for example, to add a number that is uh, made of uh, two bytes okay just one thing as well is that on the right hand side I have a full adder over there because the assumption is that I'm moving on to something like the the diagram that I've just shown you where I have four full adders uh, so sorry four of those um, four bit adders in parallel to add up a two byte number uh, because obviously the um, carry from the uh, from the this one dealing with the least significant nibble is going to be propagated in along into here because then we need to work out and we need to add that carry to, to this column over here but if you are dealing with this lowest significant um, numbers you may sometimes see a diagram where you don't have a full adder but you have a half adder instead because basically if it is the least significant bit then there is no carry coming in therefore you could just use a half adder to add those two bits together okay Right, um, so you should basically be able to explain what combinational logic is now, where the output is a function of the present inputs, and you should be able to describe how a full adder is constructed using two half adders. You should have memorized the uh, circuits for the two for the uh, half adder and the full adder, and the truth tables. So you should be able to explain how a full adder can be 
joined up in uh, in sequences to add up large binary numbers. That's it. Done.